Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. MSNBC's Joy Reid claims that Trump uses media to brainwash people, accidentally says too much. MSNBC's Joy Reid went on a long rant about how President Trump is an authoritarian dictator. She went into the specifics of how Trump could use the media to distort the minds of Americans. However, she started to get a bit too specific. Like, as someone in the media, she has spent way too much time thinking about how the media can be used to brainwash. You know, that Washington Post story said that two of Donald Trump's favorite world leaders are Erdogan of Turkey and Vladimir Putin. It does seem Donald Trump has the tools of authoritarianism down. He that the dance of authoritarianism down to a science, said Reid. Step 1, claim the investigation of you is a fraud being conducted by enemies of the state, she said. Like the media says about Trump's election and Russia. Step 2, get your state-run media your affinity media to echo that into your base and whip them up into a frenzy against those investigating you," she said. Step 3, get the state party, in this case the Republican Party, to echo that from the seat of government and say, wait a minute, the people investigating the president are themselves criminals, she said. Create this feedback loop that creates a feeding frenzy that has now essentially got Republicans claiming that Bob Mueller probably the most respected member of law enforcement in the last 30, 40 years in the United States, essentially being characterized as a criminal, and then of course, you have to add that last step. Call for the prosecution of your political enemies in this case, dredging up Hillary Clinton to again call to lock her up. Donald Trump is an authoritarian of the first order, and he's behaving like one, she said. Scarborough accuses Fox News of fomenting a constitutional crisis after hearing Jesse Waters say one word. MSNBC's Joe Scarborough completely freaked out on air after hearing a Fox News segment with Jesse Waters. The investigation into Donald Trump's campaign has been crooked from the jump, said Waters. But the scary part is we may now have proof the investigation was weaponized to destroy his presidency for partisan political purposes and to disenfranchise millions of American voters. Now, if that's true, we have a coup on our hands in America," said Waters. The suggestion of a possible coup was way too much for Scarborough. Although he didn't say anything when Whoopi Goldberg suggested that Trump firing Comey was a zoop. Does this feel like a coup to anybody? It feels like a coup," said Goldberg. Who's running Fox News, by the way? asked Scarborough. You see what some of those people are saying. I have stayed away from criticizing Fox News for years, for a lot of different reasons. But you see the irresponsibility, especially this weekend. Fox News, let me say this, they are fomenting a constitutional crisis by suggesting to people watching Fox News in middle America, that somebody is attempting a coup a coup against our government," said Scarborough. Let us be very clear. That was set up by Donald Trump's own administration, his own Justice Department, his own Attorney General, his own Deputy Attorney General. This is called the rule of law. This wasn't the deep state. This was Donald Trump's state. We're going to get to this in a little bit. But, what they are doing could lead to violence and what they are doing is about as deeply irresponsible than anything I've ever seen. And again, for the purposes of this discussion, sends Republicans even further down in the approval poll," said Scarborough. Centrism is as vile as right-wing conservatism. College attacks all people who are liberal extremists. There has been a lot of hatred back and forth because of extremist politics. It seems nice when someone can see both sides of an issue and be centrist. But according to a student-written paper at Chapman University, being a centrist is as bad as having white privilege. 
in a political environment that receives criticism for polarization, it has become almost honorable to self-describe as a moderate or a centrist. While there is value in recognizing opposing viewpoints and reaching compromises, the Republican Party has become too conservative for this to be possible, writes Matthew Joy. This has created a situation in which liberals who follow the moderate, compromising path, as opposed to holding steadfast progressive values, quietly benefit from the struggles of countless Americans, he writes. Centrism is as vile as right-wing conservatism, but it contains the additional atrocity of having no social consequences for holding views that leave fellow Americans at a disadvantage. This creates a type of privilege, he writes. Centrist ideas must only garner electoral support when they are the final option standing between the public and a conservative disaster, and even then must be met with reluctance. Just as progressives denounce white privilege, it is time to denounce centrist privilege, he writes. When communism inspired Americans, NID releases series of pro-communist articles. People have often accused liberals of becoming more communistic ever since Bernie Sanders gained popularity. The New York Times proved this with a series of articles promoting communism for the 100th anniversary of the communist uprising in Russia. The series is called Dread Century. Articles include what's left of communism, when communism inspired Americans, and even why women had better sex under socialism. Seriously. We are only at the beginning of a period of major economic change and social turmoil. As the highly unequal tech capitalism fails to provide enough decently paid jobs, the young may adopt a more radical economic agenda. A new left might then succeed in uniting the losers, both white collar and blue collar, in the new economic order, writes the New York Times. Now here is some lines from why women had better sex under socialism. Some might remember that Eastern Bloc women enjoyed many rights and privileges unknown in liberal democracies at the time, including major state investments in their education and training, their full incorporation into the labor force, generous maternity leave allowances and guaranteed free child care. But there's one advantage that has received little attention, women under communism enjoyed more sexual pleasure, writes the New York Times. Communist women enjoyed a degree of self-sufficiency that few Western women could have imagined. Eastern Bloc women did not need to marry, or have sex, for money, they wrote. This is disgusting. Black on Black Violence See Ben Carson Crush Maxine Waters Maxine Waters faced off against Ben Carson. She tried to claim that President Trump does not care about the people of Puerto Rico. Carson put her in her place. I had intended to start to talk about the housing crisis that we have. But since the president was busy tweeting this morning and you referred to HUD's role in dealing with the hurricane disasters and what you and the administration are doing, this morning Trump threatened to abandon Puerto Rico recovery efforts, asked Waters. President Trump served notice Thursday that he might pull back federal relief workers from Puerto Rico, effectively threatening to abandon the U.S. territory amid a staggering humanitarian crisis in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. So you talked about what you, HUD, is doing in cooperation with, I guess, the administration. Do you agree with the president? asked Waters. Carson responded to her accusations and distortions with class. I certainly agree that Puerto Rico is a very important territory. The people from Puerto Rico have contributed greatly to the culture of America, said Carson. I have no intention of abandoning Puerto Rico, they are a very important part of who we are, responded Carson. Waters tried to make it sound like he was disagreeing with the president. I think that our job is to make sure that we take care of the disaster that has occurred, said Carson. Sheriff David Clark eviscerates National Anthem protesters in Epic Rant Sheriff David Clark eviscerated National Anthem protesters in an Epic Rant on Hannity. 
The mainstream media is trying to claim that anyone who feels offense to football players kneeling for the national anthem is actually a racist. Al Sharpton even tried claiming that if you want players to stand then you have a plantation mindset. It takes approximately 2 minutes and 12 seconds to sing the national anthem. If the players can't stand at attention, I'm not even saying they have to put their hands over their hearts, stand at attention, face the flag for 2 minutes and 12 seconds, it means they're undisciplined, said Clark. Roger Goodell has lost control of this thing, he added. Now he's afraid. He's afraid that if he imposes a policy that they have to stand attention and face the flag they won't do it and then the question becomes, now what? said Clark. However, Al Sharpton continues to make it all about race. So you have an all-white league of owners making the decisions. Now, you put that with the fact that Jerry Jones takes a knee one day in the name of unity, but says I'm going to bench you if you take a knee. That's a plantation kind of mentality said Sharpton. So you can bend on your knee with me, and if I'm writing the script on which you get on your knee for, but don't you dare bend your knee by yourselves, boys, and think for yourself. Why is he on his knee if a knee should take you out of the game? Jones was on his knee, talking about unity, said Sharpton. Former CIA director makes shocking confession about what he did for Hillary Clinton. Michael Morrill, head of the CIA during the Obama administration made headlines when he decided to endorse Hillary Clinton during the election. However, now he is admitting that he didn't think through the implications of what he did. But I was so deeply concerned about what a Trump presidency might look like from a national security perspective and believe that there was such a gap between Secretary Clinton and Donald Trump with regard to how well they would protect the country, that I thought it extremely important to come out and say that," said Marl. But I don't think I fully thought through the implications, said Marl. So, let's put ourselves here in Donald Trump's shoes. So, what does he see? Right? He sees a former director of CIA and a former director of NSA, Mike Hayden, who I have the greatest respect for, criticizing him and his policies. Right? And he could rightfully have said, huh, what's going on with these intelligence guys? Right? said Marl. And then he sees a former acting director and deputy director of CIA criticizing him and endorsing his opponent. And then he gets his first intelligence briefing, after becoming the Republican nominee, and within 24 to 48 hours, there are leaks out of that that are critical of him and his then national security advisor, Mike Flynn, he said.